4 p.m. right here at KZSU Stanford, which means it's time for Arabology. The tables are turning on this very special episode of Arabology. And by that, I mean that the, uh, the doer will be the doee. And the interviewer is going to be the interviewee. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I will be interviewed on my own show today. Very weird feeling. And uh, that's going to be from uh, by a very, very amazing young lady whose name is Samra. She uh, is with Avicenna Journal right here at Stanford. It's an amazing journal for Islamic studies, and they include amazing stuff in their issues, uh, including an interview with yours truly, apparently. So uh, that interview will be airing on today's episode of Arabology, as well as some amazing music that's coming in from the Arab world and the Arabic-speaking world world. The amazing music you're listening to is, of course, Ah Yazin, a very traditional, very popular tune, remixed and remastered in the way that only Sharbal Moreno can do. It is his latest musical creation, may I say masterpiece. Thank you, Sharbal, for sending us these amazing instrumentals. Uh, certainly an artist in his own right, Sharbal Moreno, who is uh, res- who resides in Canada, but is uh, originally from Lebanon is famous for these kind of jams that combine uh, Eastern and Western uh, uh, beats together in this perfect harmony. We're listening to his Ah uh, oh, Zin remix. Do check him out, Charbel Moreno, if you like this music. And otherwise, we will be featuring a lot of other alternative Arabic musicians, Arab musicians from all over the peninsula, let's say, who will come to you with uh, an amazing array of... Uh, Songs that are uh, very defiant, courageous, melodic, and quite, quite lyrical. All this breaths up. A promotion for Mike Massey's upcoming concert here at uh, Stanford. I should uh, say it's a performance, a vocal performance with piano on March 11th. So we'll be playing a little Mike Massey later on in the show as well. And we'll be, uh, well, examining the Arab Spring through its music. And uh, that will be sort of the... uh, the uh, center of my uh, interview, and by my I mean uh, Samra's interview, since she will be interviewing me today. For our uh, Arabic-speaking uh, listeners, أهلاً وسهلاً ومرحباً في حلقة جديدة من سلسلة حلقات البرنامج الإذاعي الأسبوعي عربولوجيا. أنا الدكتور رمزي صلتي وسأبقى معكم حتى الساعة السادسة مساء وسأحضر لكم أغاني جميلة وجديدة باللغة العربية موسيقى عربية بديلة. كل هذا من. إذاعة كي زي اس يو في جامعة ستانفورد هنا في كاليفورنيا فأهلا وسهلا بكم Ladies and gentlemen, I recently had the pleasure of meeting a young lady from Stanford, a graduating student. Her name is Samra, and uh, Samra is uh, involved with Avicenna, uh, the uh, journal for Muslim affairs here at Stanford, an amazing, beautifully bound journal uh, that includes uh, various cultural productions from the Middle East, from the MENA region, from the, Isla- uh, the Islamic world, uh, and uh, beyond. Uh, Samra sat with me to ask me questions. 
questions about the Arab Spring for Avicenna, uh, for the Avicenna Journal. And uh, I thought, well, since it was being recorded, why not include it on today's episode of Arabology, where the tables are turned and the interviewer has become the interviewee. Let's listen to the first part of my interview or Samra's interview with yours truly. I am your DJ Ramsey. I'll be with you till six. Do you want to give us a brief introduction into what the music of the Arab Spring really means? Yeah, so I, I firmly believe that the Arab Spring was fueled by music and very few people really understand the crucial role that music played in the Tunisian Revolution, which then spilled over into Egypt and from Egypt to many other places. In fact, I can uh, trace it back to one specific song and one specific rap artist, uh, a rapper, a hip-hop artist, whose name was El General. That was not his real name, of course, but um, this kid named El General recorded a hip-hop song in which he critiqued the uh, Tunisian government at the time. It was called Raiz Libled, which translates as President of the Country. It was sung in the Tunisian dialect, and uh, basically it was a um, a song in which uh, the singer is pleading with the president of the country to take a look at what's around him, to, t- to take a look at a, t- a generation of Tunisian youths that uh, were educated, that were highly intelligent, but that could not find jobs. And uh, that's that kind of depression, both economic and emotional, led him to record that song. The song Raiz Leblad was released on the internet and gained a lot of popularity. The government at the time was not pleased with that, and they found out who El General is. He was um, subsequently arrested, he was tortured, he was uh, humiliated for this song. But the song was still out there, and people adopted it, and people were singing this um, this amazing song. And um, eventually that became sort of the anthem to the Tunisian revolt. So when the uh, system or the government governing system at the time in Tunisia it collapsed and when the revolutionaries won uh, the song continued to play on the airwaves and El General went from this very persecuted mm. musician to a key figure he was uh, later uh, featured on the cover of Time magazine in this country and um, he really unleashed uh, a string of songs and a movement that encouraged people to express themselves musically and to discuss issues that were previously censored and forbidden. <laughs> So the song Raiz Leblad then spilled over into Egypt, and there the Egyptians, who were also disillusioned with Mubarak at the time, uh, started singing that 
to their Rais, to their president. Mm -hmm. And so it took on like an Egyptian flavor, but the very song sort of survived and uh, was jumping, uh, you know, borders. And uh, of course, that led to a multitude of singers in Egypt who uh, took to Tahrir Square with their guitars and with their uh, uh, fervent desire to change. And by borrowing from um, Western genres like rap and hip hop, they were able, with Arabic lyrics, to convey their message. Those songs were heard all over Tahrir Square. You could, and there are iconic singers, young singers who uh, participated in the uprising. Several of them were initially arrested, just like El General was in Tunisia. And um, many of them were actually um, um, detained and humiliated. Um, um, even injured. Most of them survived and went on to become heroes of the Egyptian revolution. And since then, you could see a whole new generation of um, young singers, both male and females, mushroom all around the Arab world. And uh, every revolution had eventually its own soundtrack, its own song that was associated with it. But it all began, in my opinion, with that song by El General. That was wonderful. Thank you for sharing. How do you think these songs uh, pertaining to the Arab Spring differ from other revolutionary songs, or how do you think they were sustained after the initial fervor of the Arab Spring had quieted down? So when you say other, do you mean Western? Uh, yes, or other revolutions that were prior to or after the Arab Spring. Yeah, so the revolutions that were you know, prior to the Arab Spring were not fueled by music in general. I mean, you had anthems and you had political slogans that caught on, but I don't think there has ever been a revolution where music had such a driving, uh, where music was such a driving factor in mobilizing the people, in conveying the feelings of a new generation that had had enough of censorship. So, um, so that music, um, I mean, be because of the topics that it broached was one of a kind. Mm -hmm. Finally, people were singing against the government. They were singing against high prices. Women were singing for their independence. Um, there was also quite a bit of singing, you know, against Western imperialism. And at the same time, mm -hmm. there were songs for and against religion. But the fact is, they were out there. There were finally songs that express, expressed both sides of issues that were usually one-sided. And, um, and so these continue till today. I don't know... Uh, you know, what, what role they'll play in future revolutions, because in my opinion, and I think you might agree, is that, you know, the, the Arab Spring is far from over. And mm -hmm. this idea that, you know, where we are now is the end of the Arab Spring, it's, I don't believe so. I believe it's only a part of uh, the journey. And I think that music will continue to accompany the new changes that are happening. So when you have a system that's maybe currently censoring artists once again, well, the fact that artists before them were silenced and yet succeeded in getting their songs across, uh, give, uh, we're seeing a continuation of songs, sometimes by artists who are identified or non-identified, coming out despite very difficult circumstances that are still, at their core, rooting for a better tomorrow. <laughs> اللي تشالوا من قدام الدار واليومنا هذا ما بانوا والتونسي خايف مخياله ما الوقت الغدار قدش في الأحباس تانوا هذه للناس اللي ماتوا في الذل والعار لكلمة حق اللي قالوا والتونسي خايف مخياله ما الوقت الغدار قدش في الأحباس تانوا شدين الحيد والراس بالسلعه البيته عيني نغم فينا 
Uh, the Gultra Sound System, an amazing uh, band and group uh, that uh, hail from Tunisia, and uh, they are experimenting with this kind of reggae sound that you heard. So we're listening to Arabic reggae, or more specifically, Tunisian reggae. The song was called Illi Chalu, which means uh, for those who were kidnapped. And the song is really a very powerful song about those people who have been kidnapped or abused or have been even killed for saying what they believe. It's a truly revolutionary song uh, during a time of revolutions and tribulations in the Arab world. We also heard late, uh, earlier in the uh, interview a song by El General called uh, Raiz Leblad. We'll be listening to the second part of uh, Samra's interview with yours truly uh, in uh, just about... Uh, uh, a few uh, seconds, ladies and gentlemen. What a wonderful day we're having here on the ocean. A beautiful day. Can you hear that? I think it's Persephone the humpback whale. I think I hear her song now. I wonder what she's saying. She's saying we should tune in to the sunset life with DJ Away. 
It is 4.23 p.m. right here at KZSU Stanford, 90.1 FM. I am your DJ Ramsey, and let's go to part two of uh, the interview that, uh, well, I uh, recently gave to uh, Samra, who is, uh, of course, a student at Stanford University, as well as uh, involved with Avicenna Journal here at Stanford. Uh, If you haven't seen that journal, do pick it up if you're on campus. Uh, I think they're working on their latest issue as we speak. In the meantime, here... Here is the next round of questions that Sabra asked me about the Arab Spring, and this uh, interview was recorded, uh, well, 24 hours ago. What do you think some of the conditions were that made people turn to music as this vehicle for creative expression that hadn't been there in the past? Well, I think, you know, this revolution in Tunisia and in, in the, or what we call the Arab Spring, eventually what we ended up calling the Arab Spring, um, is an Internet-driven uh, revolution, you know. And we all know that, you know, were it not for Twitter and maybe Facebook and the Internet, it would have been very difficult for people to mobilize in a country like Tunisia or Egypt. So the role of the internet is to uh, link people together, to give them sort of an anonymous space in which to express themselves, and also to share music. And I think there's nothing like the power of music, of lyrics, of music um, that is distinctly applicable to the region in which uh, a young person is growing up. Music reaches people in very powerful ways, especially if it takes on a local color, so that, you know, a lot of the songs that accompanied the initial Egyptian revolution were very shabby, as Mm. we call, you know, very, uh, came from the streets, and and then the words were changed sometimes, or new melodies were based on that established genre, so that you had even genres eventually like electro-shabby, which (laughs) was an impossible genre to to even you know imagine a few years uh, before Exactly what the government cracked down on these. You mentioned that, you know, the one uh, El General who started in Tunisia was, you know, publicly humiliated, but then he bounced back after there was a, a shift in the tide of, you know, the way people thought about that. Um, but given that music is itself a touchy subject in uh, certain parts of, like, you know, more extreme uh 
Islamic culture. How does that tie into the whole thing? Yeah, so music was not only accompanied the revolutions, but were a revolution in themselves. Right. So that we had a, a musical revolution as well. Uh, prior to the uh, Arab Spring, if a if an Arab or Muslim artist were to borrow a Western genre like hip hop mm -hmm. and sing about it, he would be he or she would be dismissed as you know trying to emulate the West and uh, and and weren't considered so dangerous because they were just considered to be copying the West in a sort of a, this ever-ending attempt to become Western. Um, when the genre was appropriated in a way that expressed local issues and local concerns, then it became dangerous for the government. So initially, I think the government turned a blind eye to Arabic hip-hop or to um, Arabic revolutionary songs because they just sounded distinctly Western. Some of them were even in English or in French. Uh, but when it turned to Arabic and when the genre was Arab Arabicized, um, and when Islam was brought in with that very revolutionary spirit of the uh, songs that 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 are often uh, um, that often belong to the hip hop genre, then the government started cracking down. I think they realized how quickly songs would uh, disseminate and how uh, how powerful they were in mobilizing people and getting them, giving them the guts to get up and walk into the street and you know listen to the amazing lyrics. Uh, hip hop is so driven by these lyrics that may, can make you tear up or make you angry. And so um, the, then the government started cracking down, and I think that was the attempt to crack down on El General to, uh, to use him as an example and to punish him so that others wouldn't follow. But by then, I think the cat was out of the bag, and it was very difficult to, to do it. So although they did fi find out who he was, they traced him down. You know, I don't know exactly how they did it, maybe through IP addresses or whatever. Mm -hmm. But when they did, um, and they did uh, imprison him, there was such a movement of solidarity with him, and songs about him started uh, springing up. So, um, so I think in, uh, the the government was confronted with a new generation that was uh, armed not only with slogans but with music, and uh, it was very difficult to extinguish the music because, as you know, once it's out there, you can't you can't you know delete it. It's it's already been released. بيت الناس بتبدا مع بدايه صرخة الكل اللي كان مقهور نزل في ميداني طالب بحقه مطغي في البلد بيحكم زور حقك مهدور من عارف بس انا شايف كل اللي زايف حالف وانا اللي خايف وطالب بحقي ساعدني خلينا مع بعض نتحالف قبل ما نعمل ثوره وتكون سلميه لنعمل فوضى من اللي استفاد من فتحه تكون وهروب رموز كل السلطه خصوصا في اول دوله كانت معركه على دي وهربت وسبتوا اللي في المادي واقفين فرحتوا قدام مباريك جريتوا على السلطه اللي بتسعرها من بعد ما كنتوا جماعه محظوره وسكتنا بعديها اتهمتوا الناس اللي في الشارع ان هم جايين من بره باجنده والعجله لفت والمجلس بقى صاحبكوا بعد ما كان اللي بيقتل فينا واحد بقى يقتل هو اتكفروا انتوا واخيرا فزتوا من مقاعد برلمانيه وبعد ما كانت مطلت ثورتنا الحريه خلتوها اسلاميه والنيه هي اللي خدعتنا وفي الاخر ساعدتكوا غدانا من الاول اننا سيبناكوا على ثورتنا ركبتوا لما ركبتوا سرقتوا اقصيتوا كذبتوا وفي الحق يخونتوا والناس واقفين حداد حكمتوا ملكتوا ظلمتوا خدعتوا وفي الميدان فرحتوا واحنا لابسين سواد احمي مصالحك على حسابنا خون فرق في الصفوف اي موتي لو مش لابس تو مكتوب عليك خروف واخطب بالدين احمي الشريعه والناس ورق اسقط نظام حرميه لبس نشل نصابين طلع فرق بين نصاب وسبحه وبالحرامي مسطره شهداء قطر وايمانك اكتر من شهداء العباره احشد خرفانك اجمع واسلق دستورك اتبع اعلام فاشل بيخدع نظام محروم بيجمع طب تفسر داخليه وعسكر قبلك حاول تكسر شعب كل يوم بيموت يروح النشر يموت يركض القطر يموت يروح مدرسته يموت ينزل مزاره يموت خلاص شبعنا موت بس وعدته وخلفته الدين ما قالش عشان توصل تكتب بس انتوا كتبتوا الدين ما قالش عمره انه تخونوا اللي اهتمامكم وانتوا خنتوا دم الشهداء والمفروض اني اصدقكم الناس عماله بتموت وانتوا اتفرجتوا وسقفتوا اصغر مكان السكون وبدل ما يضحكوا كفوا حلف بحق الشهداء وغلطتوا وانتخبتوا وفي عهد الاقي الظباط اللي قتلوا بيترقوا 
مش ناخد من العسكر جبنا عساكر شطرنج المهم مصلحتهم مش مهم نعيش في دنج اخترت تبقى فاهم تتعاقب عشان فكرت ولو قررت انك تعارض تبقى خاين تبقى كفرت نفس النظام القديم تخوين في المعارضين تقسيم تجريم بس بالتحريم الايه بيقولوا اسلاميه وهم كذابين باسم الدين حافظين مش فاهمين اننا هنفقد ثوره جايه ثوره جايه طول ما الدم لسه رخيص والظلم يهد جبال بس احنا ما بنتهد صبرنا فوق الاحتمال وانتوا اخوان خنتوا الامان قرنتوا بالاهانه حطوا مرسي سد خانه انفس مريضه انفس جعانه من غيرنا احنا وغيرنا كان زمانكم في السجون ازاي كنت هتبقى رئيس من غير اللي عصروا الليمون غباء ملوش حدود خليتوا الدين دقون قال يعني هم مسلمين واحنا بنعبد امون Ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, Ahmed Rock along with Revolution Records singing an amazing song there uh, about uh, the Egyptian Revolution and its uh, subsequent stages. Ahmed Rock is perhaps one of Egypt's uh, most talented rappers. Uh, the song was called uh, Mayaraf Shiskut. And if you like that sound, do check out Revolution Records featuring Ahmed Rock. Uh, they are, well, everywhere on the internet and they've just released a new uh, CD as well. Before that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it was uh, my interview, or rather my being interviewed by uh, Samra of Avicenna Journal and uh, responding to her questions about the Arab Spring and featuring some samples of uh, music that has uh, sort of played a part in the soundtrack to the Arab Spring. So in addition to Revolution Records, uh, my Arab Scoot, we also heard an Electro Shabi song earlier by uh, Sadat and 50 Cent, who are these amazing DJs and mixers. And uh, the song was called uh, Five Pound Credit. It was taken from the Generation Best CD. So if you like what is now being called Electro Shabi music, do check out that album. <laughs> Stanford Parking and Transportation Services is having a good hair day worth a very real risk of paralysis. Whoa. The bike helmet swing. The bike helmets reduce head trauma in the event of a collision. Protect what you got. They got you into Stanford. Protect what you got. Make sure who you are. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go right to the uh, third part of uh, the interview that I recently gave uh, to Avicenna Journal, in which uh, I was asked to respond to questions about uh, the Arab Spring and, more specifically, the music that fueled and fuels the Arab Spring. That's so interesting how hip hop's universality moved from like the West to the other points of things. Um, I was going to ask, so other than El General, who are some of the other key players in um, the other countries that experienced this sort of Arab Spring? So uh, I think for Egypt, um, the undisputed name that comes up is Rami Aysam. He is um, a young singer in his uh, 20s who went down to Tahrir Square and even went And people were being, uh, um, you know, persecuted and um, and tortured and arrested. He continued to go down there, and he was arrested himself. Um, this is actually this was actually illustrated in um, the documentary "The Square." This documentary that was made about the Egyptian Revolution, and it is uh, uh, a contender for the Oscars this year for the Academy Awards. And in it, uh, Rami Assam appears and speaks about his experience. I mean, he he shows you that he was physically tortured um, he still has the scars but at the same time the courage that he always has exhibited in going back to Tahrir the second he was released and with his guitar singing against injustice and corruption and uh, the kind of system of censorship that existed so I would say Rami Aysam in many ways is the Egyptian El General
لما تكون شغال بزمة خايف على مصلحة الأمة شغلك يطلع من غير لازمة علشان ما بيعلاش غير واطي طاطي راسك طاطي طاطي انت في وطن ديمقراطي ولما شقك يصبح مش ليك فقرك سد السك عليك تتلفت تلقى حواليك اما حرامي او متعاطي طاطي راسك طاطي طاطي انت في وطن ديمقراطي ولما الجهل هيبقوا امامك او فوقك مسكين في زمامك ويسوقك على الهلك امامك تشرب من السم السقراطي طاطي راسك طاطي طاطي انت في وطن ديمقراطي ولما الكلمة تكون بتدينك لما تخبي في قلبك دينك لما الزل اشوفه في عينك هات احبطك على احباطي طاطي راسك طاطي طاطي انت في وطن ديمقراطي ولما حميها يكون حراميها وبلاده ورا ظهره رميها طالع نازل واكل فيها مسنود بالبدلة الزباطي طاطي راسك طاطي طاطي انت في وطن ديمقراطي ولما المجلس يبقى حميها وبلاده ورا ظهره رميها طالع نازل واكل فيها مسنود بالبدلة الزباطي طاطي راسك طاطي طاطي انت في وطن ديمقراطي طاطي راسك طاطي طاطي انت في وطن ديمقراطي طاطي راسك طاطي طاطي انت في وطن ديمقراطي by the time the music had spilled into Egypt, I mean, there were many, many artists in Tunis, in Tunisia, and in uh, Egypt that were singing in the same vein, and those included women. So you had uh, women like, um, uh, Tunisian women like Amal Mathluthi, who recorded an amazing CD called Kilmiti Hurra. My word is free and unencumbered. And so that she, she was a very powerful voice for women. In Egypt, you had, um, and in North Africa especially, you had uh, uh, Mariam Saleh, an amazing uh, female singer with an amazing voice who was, would, would borrow from the folkloric tunes and uh, remix them and record them in a way that was relevant to a new generation that was so accustomed to hip-hop at this point. And then, um, you know, in, uh, in Libya, you had quite a few uh, rap groups and, uh, and hip-hop artists who did this. Um, in Syria, you, had, you have an artist named uh, Omar Ofendam, who's, uh, who released a CD called Syrian Americana, and who since then has released many songs about Syria. So he became sort of the voice of a, uh, of a whole new generation of uh, Syrians and Syrian Americans. <laughs> somebody new singing about what's going on in Syria. 
Um, and, and then you had sort of these pan-Arab singers who would sing about uh, the revolutions as a whole, and many collaborations between artists old and young, you know, singing for a better tomorrow and for a uh, Arab spring that will truly uh, bear fruit um, in the long run. Uh, so this continues, and I think that, and I keep saying this to my listeners on Arabology, is, you know, when we see so much uh, torment and so much um, so much pain and uh, torture and sadness and wars going on in so many parts of the Middle East and North Africa, we forget that there is uh, an amazing amount of talent that is coming out because of these circumstances or fueled by these circumstances or in response to these circumstances, an amazing amount of talent of musicians, of poets, of artists, but especially of, of musicians, of singers who are um, in an attempt to deal with life as it is, and the feeling of helplessness you feel. So through music, they're able to record songs about their situation and put those songs on the internet and in a way reach people maybe in a more powerful way than a piece of news or a news clip could. Absolutely. I actually remember when Omar Effendim came to Stanford. That was a great performance. Oh, you did? You were you? I was there, yeah. Was it when he was here with the group? Dam Palestine, yes. That was great. So, yes, and and I should mention there that Dam Palestine are also doing for, um, you know, the Palestinians what Omar Effendim is doing for the Syrian people and what El General did for the Tunisians and what Rami Assam did for his Mm -hmm. generation of Egyptians. So it's nice to have these kind of iconic figures that continue to play a role, but uh, certainly that's not a monopoly. And uh, they have been informed by works of others, and they inform the work of uh, and the songs of so many new artists. أنا ببلعهم بتفهم ولا مرة بسيبهم بخليهم تاني مرة يضاربوا بتفكيرهم أنا وراهم قدامهم مش نامهم محتلهم مش طيقهم مرة وزنهم بيكون ملزلهم رتبهم صفقهم وبقى لما ناكمهم زادتهم مش عاجبيني أنا محيهم قائدهم وفي نفس الوقت أنا عبيدهم وبك ورابط أنا بلع بمعانيهم أنا حميهم بأسطر اللي تقويهم أنا وعدهم إني أسطر اللي فضحهم ونطلعهم بصورة اللي تبشعهم بس أنا محترمهم وبسطور سجل هم من كتفهم كاسير بجنازير الظاهر ومهديهم بحبل اللي بشر بالصبر وانا لي الفخر اكون الشوك اللي فيهم اكون الظاهر اللي دايما يسقيهم كل سمعك بس السؤال اذا اللي سمعك فهم كلمات ليس اكثر كلمات بل اللي تواجهنا وانا بدنا احبال يصير كيف سبتنا ريح العالم يكون شيء هذا احنا ضابط وقعنا بس كلمات اللي ضابط كل وحده لها هدف اخذت حرب حرب سجد شو ما اللي لبسهم وقت البرد تعرف انهم بمنصب شهاد بيحكوا الماضي وتنبوا حاضر اي بلاد قد ما حكيت قد ما حكي مش كلامي غطي بس في كلامي رب وينم انت بس سوي فيه شوف كيف النقوة والقوة بتقوي فيك والرواته مصيره يسقيك مثل القوة العدو من امامكم والبحر من وراكم فلا تخيبوا اسيادكم فاين اشعاركم واين مجادلاتكم فانتم تسقطوا وتخمدون احلامكم نهيت رجعت للعمية بكلمات مرمية طلع من عقلية شعبية مثل نجيب اللي مسكر كل واحد محفوظ مدفوظ وزلق معناته في خلال معكوس هالمجتمع اللي قمع كتاباته اللي سمح لنسيانه يشيل خطواته كل سمعك بس السؤال اذا اللي سمعك فهم كلمات ليس اكثر كلمات بل اللي تواجهنا وانا بدنا احبال السير كي تثبتنا ريح العالم يكون شيء هذا احنا ضابط وقعنا بس بالمرة كلمات اللي ضابط كل وحده لها هدف اخذت حرب حرب سجد شو ما اللي لبسهم وقت البرد تكسرها مسكها للنهاية وكل ما تفضى مليها كلمة أو رواية ومع المراحل زيدها شي حكاية وهيك ضلك زود فيها وجيبها لتجمعاتك وسيتها استعملها لنقاشاتك ولا مواقفك استخدمها هادي ما دافك اللي ما داها بسيطرتك وما دافك إنه ما تخليها رايتك ما هي تكتب ما هي توسف ما هي تكذب ما هي تنسف ما هي هي الغروب هي الوجوب هي الدروب وهي العبور بالحدود واللي بمرؤهم مبهر 
بيبدا وبيفوز بالخلود واللي بفرقهم مش متنوزه تديهم الحريه بنادوك ممنوع واذا بتاخد الحريه بنادوك مسموع كل سمعك بس السؤال اذا اللي سمعك فهم كلمات ليس كلمات بل واللي تواجهنا وين ما بدنا احنا السيركت ثبتنا ريح العالم الكل جهازها احنا ضابط وحدنا بس كلمات عندي طابق كل وحده لها هدف اخذت حرب حرب سجد شو ما نلبسهم وقت البرد The Palestinian hip hop group DAM, spelled D A M. I guess that stands for the Arab MCs, although the word DAM itself, well, we know what it could sound like in English, but in Arabic, D A M could be a verb meaning everlasting, and as a noun, it could also mean blood. So I don't know which uh, of these acronyms or meanings uh, the group was going for, perhaps all of them. The song was called Kalimat, and it was actually sampling, if you heard uh, carefully, a song by the legendary Fairuz there. The song is Habaytak Besayf. Now, of course, we never heard Fairuz's uh, voice there, but certainly the sampling uh, brought us back to the 70s when that uh, song was uh, so popular. Uh, also, uh, we heard during uh, this last segment of uh, Avicenna's interview with me, we also heard uh, Omar Ofendam, the Syrian American rapper and hip-hop artist, and from his album, Sir Americana. We heard a song called uh, Damascus in Arabic uh, Dimashq. And uh, we also heard uh, in this part of the segment a song by uh, Rami Isam, who is, uh, well, to many, the voice of the Egyptian revolution. Rami Isam and his guitar have certainly fueled the soundtrack to the Arab Spring. And the song that we played earlier was called uh, Tati Tati. Now, uh, speaking of the group uh, Dam, I just got a tweet here from a listener who says, well, blood is the substance of life as is music. Whoever you are, I am very proud of you. What an amazing tweet here for, and an amazing tribute to the group uh, Dam. 5 p.m. right here at KZSU Stanford 90.1 FM. Let's go to the fourth part of uh, the interview that I gave yesterday to uh, Samra of Avicenna magazine. Can you highlight for us maybe a few of your favorite songs or ones that you thought were the most powerful and maybe explain why? Absolutely. So, I mean, I I, I would have to say that Ra'is um, Leblad uh, was an amazing song if you looked at the lyrics in Arabic and, uh, you know, some French there. It was just a heart-wrenching, very powerful, very raw plea to the president of uh, Tunis at the time um, and and, um, and I think that song is a classic I like um, a song by Rami Isam called Tati Tati uh, speaking about you know being in a democratic country but speaking about it sort of facetiously and um, I also like some of the Lebanese singers frankly that are uh, mushrooming uh, these days um, many, some of them are singing rap. You know, I know a guy, uh, a good singer there is El Fare, for example. Um, you have a group named Fari El Atras who are pretty good at expressing local concerns and the, uh, uh, the worries of a new generation. And they do so beautifully through their music. But I'm also, I was also very taken aback and impressed by the amount of women that were singing about women's issues, uh, Muslim women's specifically who didn't feel like they had to choose between being Muslim and being you know a feminist for mm -hmm. example so they would sing about feminism and equality within the context of Islam mostly some without some without you know addressing Islam but many of them were able are starting to marry both that you can be a Muslim and be you know progressive and be this and be that without necessarily becoming Western oh,
my favorite group is, and everybody I think who knows me knows this, is a <laughs> Lebanese group. Their name is Masru Alayla. And uh, they had started with, before the actual, you know, Arab Spring, but uh, they were fueled by the Arab Spring, and then they ended up fueling the Arab Spring by singing not only about the uh, sad state of affairs in Lebanon, where the ordinary Lebanese citizen is still suffering from conditions that would be, you know, considered a very third world kind of existence in a very vibrant city. Uh, but they also started uh, broaching topics that were previously um, forbidden and uh, always looked down upon, uh, including, you know, topics that related to the plight of marginalized sexualities in Lebanon and in the Arab world. And that took great courage. And I wonder if they could have even been successful at doing that if it hadn't been for the Arab Spring, uh, encouraging young people to express themselves and to tackle issues that were previously considered taboo. And uh, then you have, you know, um, other singers, like I said, Mariam Saleh, uh, uh, Tanya, uh, there's a Tanya Saleh, they're not related. Mm-hmm. I, I love Yasmin Hamdan. Um, even singers who were previously mainstream and who started doing some pretty socially conscious stuff, like Rania Al-Kurdi from Jordan. Um, there are just so many that I couldn't, uh, I couldn't mention them all, but it, uh, I feel so proud to be you know, part of a world where these singers are existing and surviving and creating and and spreading this message. And I just hope that there'll be more appreciation for their work in their uh, country as well as internationally. And so specifically, maybe for Mashru Alayla, you know, there's a song called Ghadan Yawun Afdal, Tomorrow is a Better Day. And uh, that song was dedicated to the Arab Spring, and it, it's, it's one of my favorites as well.
The song you just heard, of course, was uh, by uh, Mashru' Layla. It was called Ghadan Yawmun Afdal. And if that melody sounded familiar to some, well, that was because it was uh, taken from uh, uh, the song by the gorillas called the Clint Eastwood. And so my joke is always, uh, since they Arabicized the song Clint Eastwood, they should have just called it Clint Middle Eastwood. Uh, before that, ladies and gentlemen, we were listening to uh, segments from uh, an interview that I gave to Avicenna Journal and uh, the uh, amazing young lady, Samira, who I had the pleasure of meeting yesterday and who recorded that interview with me, in which she asked me many questions about uh, the Arab Spring and specifically the music of the Arab Spring. So in the last segment, we did hear such music, including uh, Maryam Saleh. We heard her sing the song Nuh al Hamam. This was an Odyssey production and it was uh, featured on uh, the uh, uh, the CD Sautuha. Sautuha means her voice and this is an amazing new compilation CD in which nine women from Egypt, Tunisia, Libya, Syria got together and recorded the songs in studio and re- released them uh, with the album uh, Sautuha. So that's just one of the many female voices that have been emerging with the advent of the Arab Spring. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to play the last part of the interview uh, right here on the Arabology Show. And then after that, we'll be listening to some music and we'll also be featuring some poetry in Arabic and in English. So don't go anywhere. So I wanted to ask, uh, all of these things sound like they're more of the domain of the younger generation. Is that true? Or does this, is this more universal? Well, uh, so I'm 47. Mm-hmm. I'm turning 48 next week. So Happy thank you. Happy birthday in advance. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Samara, for, for calling me young. Because <laughs> I, I love this music and I've appropriated it. So, uh, But, you know, no, of course, in general, this was a, a younger generation kind of movement. But it has certainly spilled uh, over into all older generations. And so the main uh, way to do that is by taking the classics, classics that are, you know, been from the 40s or the 50s with singers like Asmahan or Abdel Wahab or these names that, you know, my father and my grandfather grew up with, you know, back when vinyl was still new, uh, or Imkulthum, of course, and uh, and even Fairuz, taking these, you know, iconic artists and their songs from the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and re-recording them and sampling them and remixing them and then releasing them with a different uh, flavor. So that initially, I think, shocks the older generation generation and you've got this kind of feeling like how dare they mess with the classic that is Um Thum you're mm-hmm. supposed to listen to her mm-hmm. uh, but then you, you kind of grow into it and I think they learn to appreciate um, Um Thum and also appreciate the fact that through remixing Um Thum for example you're reaching a new generation that otherwise would have been very bored with her works and didn't feel that they were very relevant to the Arab Spring and I think mostly some of the so-called purists are trying to, who are saying that, you know, hip-hop and jazz and other musical genres should never be a part of the Arabic music canon, are trying to, are finally understanding that they can be, because they're being Arabicized. They're not, they're not just copying the West, these artists. They're actually taking a Western genre and making it very applicable to their own situation. And so I think more and more the older generation is starting to accept it. And the newer generation, the younger generation, generation is um, rediscovering the classics in a new way. So I I don't mind at all hearing my favorite singer of all time, Fairuz, from Lebanon Remixed. Now, a lot of my friends will say, no, they shouldn't touch Fairuz. She's supposed to be, you know, pure and and you'd have to listen to the original recording. Uh, You know, I think that that if we did that, she will be relegated to a past decade, uh, which was her prime decade. And although these songs should, uh, you know, survive and should be appreciated for what they were, I think uh, there is nothing wrong with uh, remixing them and uh, exposing Fairuz to a new generation and allowing them to discover uh, the beauty of her voice.
Jason, thank you so much for these uplifting stories and all of this great knowledge. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Samra. And I'm glad you find this to be uplifting because a lot of times when we talk about the Arab Spring and we look at the news, we feel so depressed and helpless. And we see young people with, um, you know, curiosity and a love for life. And because of their circumstances, they're not able to continue their education. They're, they're struggling to survive, to eat, to drink, to, uh, to just exist. Uh, and so one gets very, very depressed. And uh, I think the music is uplifting. And I think if you give that music a chance, it will uplift you wherever you are. But it all has also succeeded so far in uplifting them. So the idea is not to look at this music as very depressing, even if it is speaking about massacres and inequality, but to look at the uplifting fact that it's being recorded, it's being spoken about, and perhaps through that we'll get to a better tomorrow. Uh, Russia, it is a, a beautiful moving song there called uh, Elegy, in French Elegy or Ritha and that was another gem taken from the album Sautuha this amazing compilation album that has recently been released by Jakarta Records and that includes nine singers that are singing about the Arab Spring or who spring from the Arab Spring Russia, it is a, uh, concluded uh, the interview Interview that you have been listening to on today's episode of Arabology. So thank you to Samra for that amazing interview. And thanks to everybody out there for listening to that interview, which included uh, clips and uh, various songs, which in my opinion, at least, have contributed to the soundtrack of the Arab Spring. Among those you heard before Rasha uh, a great remix of a very famous song by 
Fairuz. That song was Nassam uh, Alain Al Hawa. The version you heard was by was mixed or remixed by DJ Nader. It was taken from his CD Hizzy Hips in the Mix, and that included a lot of mixes by various artists. So jarring as it may be to some, it was uh, pretty interesting over here at the station to hear uh, Fairuz being housed up and remixed so beautifully and uh, I don't think Nassam Alain Al Hawa ever sounded so good. Ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, 5.15 p.m. right here at KZSU Stanford 90.1 FM. We're going to continue with some beautiful music coming your way from the Arab world and beyond. It is music that mainly comes in from the MENA region, music that is addressing the current state of affairs, sad as they may be, in many parts of the Arab world. It is the hope of the Arabology show always that the music we play, though it could be heart-wrenching, will also remind us all that in music lies the hope for a better tomorrow. And speaking of that, let's listen to an Egyptian group named Ashara uh, Gharbi. And here they are singing uh, Masri right here on the Arabology show, coming to you from KZSU Stanford, 90.1 FM. <laughs> Oh, 
وخدني بعيد انا عم نبعد برا وسوق فيها شوي شوي عاليمين والعواميد عالشباك تتوالى هذا الطريق اخر تولح حنحازين والسيجارة نستني نستني اصحى الساعة ستة المساء اصحى ركز وصلني عالسبعة تحكيش مع حد اطلع بالسيارة وخدني بعيد عن عمان بعيد برا وسوق فيا شوي شوي عاليمين والعواميد عالشباك تتوالى هذا الطريق اخر تولح حزين والسيجارة نستني نستني سكر عيونك واسمع الهوى وبهالسرعة مع غيرنا بنتساوى طلعنا لهموم جواتنا فلت ايديك طيرنا عالسما والعداد عم يزيد السرعة انا حر مش مجبور عالطاعة والسيجارة نستني نستني ركز وصلني عالسبعة تحكيش مع حد اطلع بالسيارة خدني بعيد عن عمان بعيد برا وسوق فيا شوي شوي عاليمين والعواميد عالشباك تتوالى هذا الطريق اخر تولح حزين والسيجارة نستني نستني ونستني How is that, ladies and gentlemen? A triple dose of what I'm going to call Arabic rock, or is it hard rock? Is it a little bit of heavy metal there? Yes, it was all mixed together and brought to you courtesy of three amazing bands. The one you just heard was Akhir Zafir. The title was Akhirto Lahin Hazin, which means that at the end of the road, there's always a sad melody. Great song there from their album Converse Culture. Before that, well, that rock and sound was none other than the group Khalas. I've played them before, and every time I play them, I get an amazing uh, amount of feedback that was 
their version of uh, the song Ala Rimsha Yunha. And that, of course, was the song that was originally made popular by none other than Wadia Asafi from Lebanon. He uh, has passed away by now, but boy, does he leave a legacy behind. And a great shukran to the group uh, Khalas for keeping his music uh, alive and, uh, well, giving it a rockin' sound, too. It was taken from their album Arabic Rock Orchestra. And the sound before that, well, it started out kind of sensual and, and slow, but then it quickly picked up speed. It was called the Fi Nabad and Has, which means I feel a pulse. That song was taken from the Jordanian rock group Jadal, and it was taken from their new album called El Makina. El Makina, ladies and gentlemen, means the machine. I'm Elena. I have a master's degree in giving hope to children in Ethiopia. I'm John. My farm experience helped villagers in the Philippines feed themselves. If you have a degree in agriculture, the environment, or teaching English, you actually have a degree in doing more than you ever thought possible. Peace Corps volunteers can have a positive impact in the lives of people all over the world. To learn more, visit PeaceCorps.gov. I'm Elena. My resume now includes changing lives. We're about to uh, slow things down right here on the Arabology show right now and uh, bring you some Arabic poetry. Now, before you run away, I'm going to translate it into English for you first so that when you hear the original Arabic being recited by none other than poetess Rudain al-Filali, you will know why she is just so angry. Rudain al-Filali uh, was born in uh, Tripoli, uh, that's in Libya, in uh, 1981, and she won uh, several prizes in English literature. She also obtained a uh, bachelor's degree in political science and moved from country to country with her father, whose name is uh, Mustafa al-Filali, uh, a man who occupied many diplomatic posts all around the region for a period of 53 years. Her mother's name is Lam'an Ahmad bin Bih. She is the daughter of a Sheikh Ahmad bin Bih, who is really one of the biggest and most pronounced symbols of the uh, cultural revolution that took place in the city of Tripoli in Libya. Rudaina is a Libyan poetess who became uh, very well known after publishing uh, her uh, collection of poems titled uh, Footsteps of a Female. That uh, book and that anthology contained uh, many poems about love, hate, anger, betrayal, and more. On today's episode of Arabology, I'm going to try translating one of Rudain al-Filali's poems. It's called Wasa'id wa Sharashif, and that uh, title means Pillows and Bedsheets. Yes, indeed. I don't think an English translation has ever been uh, attempted, so we're going to try to do an impromptu one right here on the Arabology show today. And then we'll follow my English translation with the original poem in Arabic, being read by the Libyan poetess herself. The poem, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is uh, quite uh, heart-wrenching and uh, is uh, spoken or uh, narrated by a woman who has, uh, well, uh, just caught her husband in a very compromising position. Here we go with the lyrics to Wasa'id wa Sharashif, that's Pillows and bedsheet, a po- Bedsheets, a poem by Libyan poetess uh, Rudain al-Filali. busy? And with what thing are you busy? While her perfume emanates from you like a field of poppies. Did I surprise you? Or did I just show up early so that you now hold the door shut with your hand to prevent me from entering the room? Gather up your empty words, you deceitful fool. For her red is on your lips and on your wet face. Your shirt buttons have been ripped open and you, you, you claim to be busy? 
Is that a streetwalker with you in the room? A woman who sells her body? A woman you picked up in some alley to prove your alleged virility? It was I. I who spent all seasons of my life with you. It was I who loved you, taught you how to speak. And today, you are here, lying to me, preventing me from entering. Return to her charms and continue acting in your stage play. A play about betrayal in which the heroes are mindless people. Mindless people who make love on sidewalks, in back alleys, in filthy bars, in grungy pubs. I had chosen you to be mine in all that was clean and proper. Back then, we were together, and you still felt shy in love. And now, I see you parading around with a busy expression on your face, with sweat pouring out of your dying body, while I, I fall apart like leaves of autumn. Why did you sell me out? For instinctual desires, nothing more. Why did you let me down and put us both in this ridiculous position? Love, you traitor, is noble and clean, while your love, your love, is nothing more than pillows and bedsheets. Return to her and tell her that women are the finer sex, women who don't sell their bodies for a loaf of bread. Tell her you are merely a simpleton who could never perceive love, so hidden are you in a heavy layer of fog. I will tend to my wound. I will stop the bleeding. I will leave behind my youth my days of fall, and I will bury your love with my own hands, the way one buries a martyr in this great religion of ours. فاجأتك أم أني أبكرت الوصول لتضع يدك على الباب وتمنعني الدخول لملم كلماتك أيها العابث المسطول فأحمرها في شفتيك على وجهك المبلول وأزرار قميصك منزوعة وأنت أنت مشغول متسولة تلك التي معك أم بائعة جسد تجول أم إنك أحضرتها من الطرقات لتثبت رجولة العجول أنا أنا التي أفنت العمر معك بكل الفصول أنا التي أحبتك علمتك ماذا تقول وجئت اليوم لتكذب علي وتمنعني الدخول عد عد إلى أحضانها وأكمل المسرحية بكل الفصول فمسرحية الخيانة مسرحية الخيانة أبطالها أناس سلبت منهم العقول يمارسون الحب على الأرصفة في الحانات بين السهول لكنك لكنك اخترت مكانا وفقا للشريعة والأصول حيث كنا سويا وكنت في الحب خجول والآن أراك أسدا تصول تجول وملامحك تدل فعلا أنك مشغول 
العرق يتصبب منك كمحتضر ضعيف وأنا أتساقط ألما كورق الخريف لما؟ لما بعتني واشتريت الغرائز والتخاريف لما خذلتني جمعتنا في هذا الموقف السخيف الحب الحب أيها الخائن الحب أيها الخائن طاهر شريف وحبك حبك حبك وسائد وشراشيف عد لها عد لها عد لها وأخبرها أن النساء جنس عفيف لا يبعن جسدا من أجل ماء ورغيف أخبرها أنك إنسان كفيف لم يبصر الحب يوما لأن ضبابه كثيف وأعود وأعود وجرحي يكسوه النزيف تاركة ورائي شبابي أيام الخريف لأدفن بيدي حبي الطاهر الشريف كما يدفن الشهيد في ديننا الحنيف
the amazing and one and only Mike Massey from Lebanon and a beautiful song there called Soti Herib Minni, which means uh, my voice is escaping me or escaping from me. Beautiful track there from his uh, CD, Yazaman. And speaking of Mike Massey, ladies and gentlemen, uh, well, get ready for March 11th because for the first time ever, Mike Massey will be coming to Stanford University here right here on the Stanford campus for two events. At noon, he will be uh, performing along with a piano at the uh, Campbell Recital Hall that's in the Braun Music Center right here on campus. And that's from uh, 12 noon until about 1.30 p.m. So uh, you're welcome to come to that. And uh, if you can't come to the noon uh, performance, then certainly you are welcome to come to the 6 p.m. event right here at Stanford as well, in which Mike Massey will lecture about Lebanese and Middle Eastern Arabic music, and he will be doing so with the, uh, well, help of the audience, because I hear that he will also be uh, uh, singing a few a cappella songs, as well as take uh, questions from the audience, a great opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to meet one of Lebanon's most talented musicians. He is is an artist in every sense of the word, a performer, a pianist, an actor, a dancer, and of course, a singer. If you don't know Mike Massey, you really should go find out. His uh, album Yazaman continues to top the Lebanese charts and continues to uh, make waves in a good way all over the region. Mike Massey represents the new generation of uh, Arab singers who are combining Eastern and Western genres in perfect harmony. And speaking of uh, Mike Massey, I'm about to play another one of his tracks uh, right here on the Arabology Show. And that's right after I say a very special salam to Henry, who, uh, if you recall last week, uh, was in the studio speaking about Mike Massey. I believe Henry will be at the event and uh, will be uh, hopefully singing along in Arabic. Now, if you know what I'm talking about, that is because that young man has uh, resolved himself to speak Arabic in, uh, well, a very short period of time. So we'll see if by March 11th, when Mike Massey is in concert, if he, as well as the other students and people in attendance, will be able to uh, sing along to Mike Massey. And uh, Mike, of course, does not just sing uh, beautiful ballads, but is, can also... Uh, uh, sing more jolly tunes as in the tune Khalas Naba'a not sure if you've heard this one or seen the video clip it's kind of hilarious uh, the song is very uplifting it's called Khalas Naba'a which translates as enough already it is also taken from the album Yazaman let's uh, listen to him as we begin to wind down today's episode of Arabology and get ready for the Peninsula Report which comes to you of course at 6pm right here at KZSU Stanford 90.1 FM here is Mike Mann Massey. <laughs> خلصنا بقى خلصنا مشاعر عبنا من الهوى خلصنا بلكي بتقرر على مهلك تنحل سوا خلصنا بقى خلصنا بقى خلصنا مشاعر تعبنا من الهوى Not 
نرجع اكيد كلمه بتجيب وبتودي وعم نرجع منعيد خلصنا بدي وما بدي ويمكن مش اكيد كلمه بتجيب وبتودي وعم نرجع منعيد يا حبيبي بعد غيابك غيرنا الطريق حتى غيرنا المعزوف That was the one and only Mike Massey, ladies and gentlemen. And if you like what you heard, then definitely join us here at Stanford on March 11th. That's a Tuesday. He'll be performing a vocal performance with a piano uh, on uh, at noon on March 11th. Again, that's at the... Uh, Uh, Braun Music Center and specifically at the Campbell Recital Hall and at 6 p.m. that same day he'll be giving a beautiful talk a gorgeous lecture about Lebanese and Middle Eastern music at uh, in building 300 room 300 that's an easy building to remember building 300 room 300 6 p.m. Mike Massey that's on Tuesday March 11th ladies and gentlemen with a few minutes left uh, all that I would like like to say is thank you so much for joining me on Arabology today. It has been an extra special treat to be with you. Thank you to everybody who's been tweeting. Thank you for those people who are visiting the Facebook page at facebook.com slash Arabology. Thanks for your suggestions, your input, and for having uh, the open minds that you do, that uh, minds that let you uh, cross cultures and listen to Arabic music and attempt to understand it despite the language barrier. I hope the result has been a pleasant one for you today, and I hope that the uh, variety of musical genres will open everybody's ears and minds to world music in general, and especially the music that is currently coming out of the Arab world, music by young and old musicians who are singing with new flair, new courage, and singing always for an, a better tomorrow. Don't forget to stay tuned for Eliza Ridgeway and the Peninsula Report that's coming up in a few minutes right here at KZSU Stanford. And uh, as for me, all I have to say is shukran, merci, thank you for joining me today, and I shall see you next week, 4 to 6 p.m. right here at KZSU Stanford 90.1 FM. Here is Jamia Taksir, al Qasida Shirira, to end today's broadcast of Arabology. Peninsula Report is next, ladies and gentlemen, with Eliza Ridgeway. You do not want to miss it. One of the, uh, well, most beloved shows right here at KZSU, Stanford, 90.1 FM.